The most common question I get from friends and family is how can I tell which advisor is the best? So I put together an easy list of seven questions that you should ask to help you find the advisor that's the best fit for you. The first question that you're going to want to ask are what are their qualifications and experience? This question will shed some light on the area of expertise they may have and any designations that they carry. If they do have a professional designation, then they most likely have a fiduciary duty to put your needs ahead of theirs in their organization. The next thing I would want to know are what are the products and services that they offer? Depending on the institution or the qualifications of the advisor, they may only have access to a specific product line, like maybe segregated funds only, or perhaps mortgages only, while other advisors are able to offer you a whole suite of products on the investment side and the lending side. Some advisors even offer full financial planning as well as budgeting tips to help you meet your financial goals. Now, that doesn't mean that the goal is to find a jack of all trades. There is absolutely nothing wrong with dealing with multiple professionals, especially if they have an expertise in a specific area. In fact, sometimes that actually makes more sense. So just find out if they can't offer you all of the products and services you might need, do they have contacts in place to help you? The third question that I would ask is what type of experience can I expect? Because that'll let me know what the relationship will be with that particular advisor. We've all been in that situation where we sat with a professional only to unfortunately never see them again. Now for some people, that's completely okay. Others offer detailed financial plans and even set regular meetings to review your investments and the progress of your goals. So if you're the type of person that's looking for a long-term relationship with your advisor, or you just prefer to deal with the same person, you need to ask this question. Question four, what are the fees and how do you get paid? There's a couple of different ways that institutions make money and compensate their advisors. So let's start off by taking a look at some of the different fees. The first fee is fee for service. So that might be a flat fee or an hourly fee that you pay to meet with an advisor. The second type of fee are product fees. These are probably the most common and a great example of that are mutual funds. That's when they actually take the cost to the investor and wrap it up in the product itself. And the third type of fee is a percentage charged based on the assets under management. That's basically when you're charged an annual percentage rate on the entire amount that you have invested. So how are financial advisors or planners compensated? Well, there's a couple of different ways. They might be paid salary only, or it could be a combination of either sales bonuses or commission with or without a salary component. Now, this is something you're going to want to know. Is your financial advisor provided an incentive to sell you one product over another? And thirdly, trailing commissions. This is when the institution actually pays them a percentage every single month on the total value of the investments that they're managing. In a lot of cases, this can actually be advantageous for a client. And that's because it's offering your advisor an incentive to provide you great service even if you're not purchasing additional products. And that's because if you were to leave, the advisor immediately takes a pay cut. Number five, what other investment services do you offer at this institution? Institutions usually offer tiered planning services, meaning based on the value of your investments, Different services, products, and advisors are recommended. Generally, the more money that you have, the more access that you'll get to products that might either carry lower fees or advisors that charge their fees in a way that are tax deductible. Make sure you understand what the institution's entire product offerings are so you know what you qualify for and that you're meeting with the right person. Number six, are there any extra fees? This is such an important question to ask because it's gonna help us avoid unpleasant surprises. So you want to know if an investment's bought and sold, is there a fee for that? Or what if you want to change your investment strategy or you have to close an account or change an account? Is there a fee for that service? Don't be afraid to ask that question because banks and investment advisors always have summaries of all their fees and they have them to hand out to clients. The seventh and final question is asking for a summary in writing. Don't be afraid to ask for this. You want a copy for your record so you can go back and review your financial progress. As well, you don't want to feel pressured to make a decision on the spot. If you need more time, ask for it. Take the information home and make a decision once you're comfortable. I'd like to hear if there are any questions you normally ask or any experiences that you'd like to share. Comment below to let everyone know. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.